to the Virtual Pathfinder channel. This is a review of the Samyang 12mm f2.0 lens for Micro Four Thirds cameras. We will have a closer look at all the important aspects of this lens. If you are interested in photography, lenses and camera equipment, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'm interested to hear your opinion about this lens. Please write what you think about it in the comment section below. Samyang is a South Korean lens manufacturer which produces lenses for many standards. The lenses are sold under different brand names, for instance Samyang and Rokinon. These usually have good optical performance at an affordable price. Samyang lenses are often manual, like the one in this review, and sometimes one lens design is adapted to several standards. The lens in this review has no support for autofocus or automatic aperture control. The focal length is 12mm, which is equivalent to 24mm focal length for a full frame camera. That makes it a wide angle lens. It can be used for architecture as well as low light photography. The large maximum aperture can create images with relatively shallow depth of field, where the object in focus is isolated from the blurred out background. At this wide angle, that is mainly possible when the background is not too close to the object in focus. First I will have a look at the physical characteristics of the lens, then the specified optics and functionality before moving on to various aspects of image quality. Finally I will present my conclusions about the lens, with some comments about how to use it and what kind of photography it's good for. Let's start with the physical characteristics of the lens. I measured the weight to be about 245 grams. I found the length to be about 59 millimeters. It is neither lightweight or heavy, it's kind of medium sized lens. The filter thread has 67 millimeter diameter. The aperture ring snaps to aperture setting between f2.0 to f22. 
it is easy to use and has distinct settings that makes it possible to use it without looking at it. The only problem with that is that the setting is not communicated to the camera, so one has to look at the aperture ring to see the aperture setting. There is a focus ring with distance scale from 0.2 meters to infinity, which is nice to use. It has the right amount of friction. I recommend always using focus peaking or finder magnification when using manual lenses to make sure that the focus is right. It is quite difficult to focus just using the finder as it is. A lens hood is included with the lens, which is very good, but I was a bit surprised when using it, mainly because it felt a bit loose. I have other Samyang lenses where the lens hood snaps on more firmly into place when attached. Often when I do photography in the winter, I have the camera in a strap around my neck under a jacket. Instead of having a lens cap on, I usually just use the lens hood to protect the lens in these cases. It has worked well for all of my lenses except this one. First time I used the lens a winter day, the lens hood came off and I lost it. That was a pity, it was a good lens hood, apart from the attachment mechanism. Of course it is possible to order a new one, but the best price I could find was about 30 US dollars including shipping. I don't know if this is a problem that is typical for this lens, in any case if you buy this lens I recommend you check if the lens hood is firmly attached and if not try to fix it or just keep an eye on it. The general quality impression of the lens is very good. The lens is not weather sealed. If you intend to use it outdoors in bad weather then that needs to be considered. The focal length is 12 mm as previously mentioned that corresponds to 24 mm lens for a full frame camera which makes it a wide angle lens. It has aperture settings between f2.0 to f22. The autofocus lights and highlights appear as nice circles when the largest aperture is used. The closest focus is 0.2 meters, which is not macro distance at this focal length, but it makes close shots possible. The lens has no support for autofocus or aperture control from the camera. It is fully manual. There is no image stabilization in the lens. I use Olympus cameras which have image stabilization in the camera body. If you use a different camera brand, for instance Panasonic, that may be good to know. The lens does not communicate the EXIF data to the camera. In other words, the focal length and aperture setting for each shot are not saved to the image files. The aperture setting is not visible in the camera finder either, which can be a bit of a problem in low light situations, when it may be hard to see the numbers on the aperture ring. It is also a bit annoying not to be able to see the aperture settings when analyzing images. I've shot some photos of a test pattern using various apertures to check if there is vignetting or distortion in the images. The resulting images show a slight barrel distortion as well as a bit of vignetting at the largest aperture f2.0. You can stop the video for each setting and have a closer look at the images of the test pattern. When looking at the center and edges of the test images it's possible to see the sharpness of the different aperture settings. Overall I find this lens to be very sharp. The sharpness at the largest aperture f2.0 is good but not top level and that was to be expected. For other settings the edge and center looks sharp. Chromatic aberration is very limited. I show some images to give an idea about the color rendering. My impression of the color rendering is that it's neutral. Overall the images are sharp with high quality especially when stopped down one step from the maximum aperture. When looking at flare, mainly shooting against the sun, there is a very limited amount. I would say that flare is well controlled. There is some ghosting in those situations. The lens hood can reduce it further. In general, the object or subject isolation is a bit harder to achieve at this short focal length. For f2.0, the background can be blurred out to some extent, especially if the object in focus is near the camera. The autofocus lights and highlights appear as circles. The bokeh is smooth and looks good in those situations. The typical use for this kind of lens is landscape wide-angle photography capturing very wide landscapes. It can also be used for architectural photography. Both interior and exterior is possible due to low distortion. This lens is good for low light photography. It can handle dark environments using the largest aperture f2.0. It can create images with shallow depth of field. This is not an optimal lens for that purpose. 
but it's possible. It can be used for artistic photography. The wide angle of this lens allows a certain degree of creativity. Action photography is usually not possible with a manual focused lens, but it is possible daytime using small aperture with very large depth of field. It is not optimal, but it's possible to use for this purpose. I summarize the negative and the positive for this lens. First, the negative. The lens hood may be a bit loose. It is not weather sealed. There is no support for autofocus or automatic aperture setting and there's no image stabilization and the EXIF data is not transferred to the camera. The positive. This lens is very bright, enabling low light photography as well as shallow depth of field. It has good image quality with relatively low distortion. The bokeh is smooth and looks good. The lens has a good quality feel and a lens hood is included. As mentioned earlier, this lens is mainly useful for interior and exterior architecture. For more general photography, it is maybe not the most useful focal length, since it makes people and object look very small unless they are very close to the camera. But it's definitely good for interior architecture photography, being able to capture whole rooms in a single shot, even in low light situations. Regarding the price performance ratio, this lens is cheaper than the alternatives among the native Micro Four Thirds lenses, which is expected, since those are fully automatic and well integrated with the functionality in the camera. Usually the native lenses have top-notch image quality as well. I haven't made any comparison of the image quality since I don't have any of the native 12mm alternatives. For a photographer who can accept manual handling of aperture and focusing, this lens delivers good image quality at a very attractive price. In the year 2021 it is about 250 US dollars or about the same amount in Euro. I had a look at the native Micro Four Thirds lenses with the same focal length. As mentioned, those lenses support automatic aperture and focusing and some other functions. With that in mind, here are two native lenses at 12mm focal length. First, Olympus M Zuiko 12mm f2.0. It cost about 700 US dollars. The specifications look similar to this lens, but it is fully automatic. It weighs 130 grams and has 43mm length. The price is almost three times higher than the lens in this review. Then we have the Panasonic Leica DG Summilux 12mm f1.4. That lens cost about 1300 US dollars. With aperture f1.4 it is twice as bright as the lens in this review and it has excellent optics. It weighs 335 grams and has 70 mm length. The price is more than five times the price of the lens in this review. So finally, is this lens good value for the money? My conclusion is, if you can accept manual handling the lens in this review is very good value for the money. If you really need autofocus and automation, then you have to pay at least three times the price of this lens. It can then be worth looking at the second hand market for the Olympus 12mm lens, but even if you find it there, it will likely cost more than this lens. If image quality is more important than functionality, then the Samyang lens is a good budget choice. I hope this was useful information for you. If you find this video interesting, please like and subscribe. I will soon make a review of macro rings for Micro Four Thirds lenses. Those transform any lens into a macro lens. Have a nice week and stay safe.